Hello and welcome to these conversations on curating art practice and writing in times of isolation and social distancing. Hope you enjoy and welcome to Homework. Hello Susie, uh, nice to see you uh, and welcome to Homework. Um, before we get started, for those listening, I'm going to do a brief intro. Um, correct me if I get anything wrong, but I've also pulled up your About section from the website as well, so hopefully it's still similar in tone. So Susie Green's work predominantly in painting, performance and sculpture, focusing on the human body as a site for ornamentation and sensuality. At the heart of her work is an exploration into the personal and political powers of intimacy, vulnerability and transgression, and a transforming of private experience into public expression. So hello Susie and welcome to Homework. Hello. Yes. So what I would like to do today is to talk through some of your work, um, some ideas behind it, your really, really recent residency in Lithuania at the Nida Art Colony, um, and then kind of wrap up with some ideas about how you think best to sustain practice and what you still have to keep doing from this kind of restricted environment and how you're sustaining your own uh, practice. So to start, let's um, start with the recent residency at the Nida Art Colony. It'd be great if you gave us a bit more info as to how that came about and what you've been doing whilst in Lithuania. It was like um, uh, an apartment with a studio downstairs um, and Upstairs, I had sleeping room and little kitchen, uh, and I was one of five artists from uh, different countries who were there uh, in different ways. Um, it was really great. The, the whole uh, area where Nida Art Colony is is a UNESCO heritage site, so it's protected, mm -hmm. um, protected area, incredible nature very different to where my studio is in Newcastle city centre. Um, it's very uh, rural, um, sand dunes everywhere, kind of looks like the moon, pine forests. Um, and while I was there, uh, I, I started becoming interested in the mythology and folklore that I was reading about that was almost quite cheesy, uh, but it was quite interesting as well, this kind of idea of um, goddesses or sort of um, mystical figures who, uh, stories about how land masses might have been created. So in particular, uh, there's a goddess called Naringa, who uh, there's a story that she's a giant, a giantess. Mm -hmm. A regular family give birth to a woman who it turns out to be a giant. Ooh. And uh, through her long hair, she stretches it out across the water and saves sailors at sea and all this kind of uh, sort of quite romantic imagery. Uh, but in this idea of like a, a goddess um, and a very large, powerful female form, I got quite interested in that. So I was making paintings and also uh, installation while I was there. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a great opportunity. I met some really lovely people. Yeah. So the, um, the Naringa as a as a symbol, how did you come about that, and how did you approach making work in response to it? Um, well, I saw some public. There's quite a lot of uh, public sculptures which are, again, like very, um, yeah, very romantic. So like. A kind of bronze sculpture by a fountain where there was yeah this flowing hair and kind of like mermaid mm. type figure um which yeah they're quite kitsch in <laughs> my eyes um but I also I went to the local library um one of the people who was working at the art colony she took me to the local library and I found a book that had a really nice illustration in it um of of this myth and uh she also translated it for me um 
but because I'd originally written a proposal that said it was going to, I was going to research nightclubs in rural areas. <laughs> um, and then I got to this rural area and it's, everything's closed because it's the winter. Mm. And also what I was perhaps interested in was something which is now, uh, doesn't necessarily exist anymore either. I'd come across some photographs by a photographer called Andrew Mishkis. And he took photos um, just uh, in the early 1990s when Lithuania had become independent from the USSR. And they're beautiful, beautiful photographs of young people in nightclubs, which used to also be like Soviet headquarters. Um, and this had been my starting point for my application. Uh, and when I got there, I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to find any of this. But I was also started imagining what uh if there was a nightclub that was called goddess mm. uh what that could look like and so in one of the rooms in the residency uh building i kind of made this uh sort of laced up installation with some curtains that were in there and we did like low lighting and i played a soundtrack mm. that i'd made um in that room it felt like a kind of sketch, really, because there's not so many people there right now, so we couldn't make it into a club, really. But I was just sort of using this one... I, to start with, the first thing I made on the residency was a painting that just had the word goddess written on it. And then I could have that as a a word just to think around for myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, I felt like, in a way, that painting almost became a like... Um, an imagined sign for an imaginary nightclub. Nice. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So we're currently <laughs> looking at images of the painting series Frivolity um, whilst you're talking through the residency. Would yeah. the kind of the idea of this nightclub sign have a similar kind of aesthetic framework to these kind of very uh, beautifully kind of watercolored paintings of people engaging or they're, they're made with felt pens as well aren't they isn't it like liquid no it's just pencil and pencil, watercolor pencil and watercolor yeah yeah but they're quite yeah they look like ink almost yeah um yeah the 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 sign was quite gloopy mm -hmm. the word goddess was quite gloopy looking and i also started thinking about like um i did quite a lot of series of paintings which i will upload onto my website soon Ooh, during exciting. this time of being at home <laughs> um i did a lot of paintings of like massive mouths mm. as well mm. um and i guess i was also thinking about like imagery of like heavy metal bands mm. and uh these kind of fonts which you might see uh of particular type of music mm. like quite ornamental fonts i suppose yeah, I mean, my brain was just uh, as it should on a residency, like um, finding new points of reference. Yeah. When you're talking about mouths, it's making me think of the work Ode that you did uh, in a space that Dawn and I have in our house in Bad yes. Spirits, um, yes. where you had all of these kind of candle holders um, yeah. and just bringing up the work now so we can see it. Um, yeah. Was that kind of reference to mouths coming from that kind of same place, these kind of foil structures? Mm, I guess I, when I made that work, I was thinking about uh, long distance communication in a funny way. So I made these, uh, yeah, these very soft metal sculptures that have these fragmented body parts like floating around the room. But then they also look a bit like um like votive or uh, sort of um objects that might be used uh, um, for prayer or uh um yeah or healing um but in that sense i guess i was thinking about i don't know like yeah mouths talking but also not being able to really meet mm. uh, uh yeah and um, i was thinking about like distance romantic communication with my partner so in that installation 
I was doing a kind of very rough representation of me and him. Mm. So one of the characters is a head that has long hair and the other one has curly hair like him. But then it's like bits just floating around the room. Uh, Yeah. And then while I was on residency recently, the mouths, I think in that sense, it started off because I was, I mean, I was talking, I was talking a lot (laughs) to people and I was also thinking like, I don't always find, even though I'm talking a lot now, I don't always find talking that easy, like many people. Or sometimes you just talk, blah, 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 and things come out your mouth, you don't really even know what you're saying. And um, But then I started thinking almost like of nature talking as well. Um, and this, I don't know, like if, if the nature that I was in was to become a... Uh, uh, like a, a spirit, I guess, that, yeah, this it would just have a huge mouth. <laughs> 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 but obviously, you know, like all of this idea of giving things like a human form is, is also crazy, mm. you know. But like this, yeah, animism, I think, of like giving something a spirit or, uh, yeah. I think that idea of bringing back into the, the idea of what you're talking about in terms of giving something a human form and that kind of response to thinking about a location where people uh, might congregate, such as the idea of a nightclub and your original proposal for it, moving into the signposts or symbols of what that might mean, um, probably has similar kind of relationships to the performance work, The Hold, that you did. Um, which yes. Which is kind of um, paper-made humanoid <laughs> structure that you perform yeah. with. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, aha, amazing. Yes. In fact, oh, yeah. Because so that performance uh, was at Tate's and Ives in July mm-hmm. 2019. And I was commissioned uh, by Tate's and Ives to respond to another artist's work, which you can see in the background of that image. So the artist, um, she's called Huguette Calland. Mm-hmm. Um, she sadly died uh, quite recently, just after this exhibition had been installed. Um, she, uh, she, her exhibition, if you look it up on the Tate's and Eyes website, uh, you see lots of very beautiful, uh, very brightly coloured. Um, yeah, it's spelled H-U-G-E-T-T-E. H-U-G-E. Uh, Let's do that. H U G H U G E T T E E T T E, and then her surname is Caland, which is C A L A N D. Um, and uh, there, I guess there's parallels in some ways between her work and my work, um, in the sense that there's a lot of kind of abstracted, uh, erotic <laughs> forms. Mm. Um, really very beautiful colours, um, sort of just very yeah strong imagery, and these are images of these amazing caftans that she made. Um, but I was yeah hugely flattered to mm. to have my work paired alongside her. So for that performance, um, I did a, uh, through having site visits to the gallery beforehand. I could think about what I wanted to do and um, around that time. So that image is, um, I had a red latex cat suit made um, because, I mean, when else was I going to get the opportunity <laughs> to to have a red latex cat suit? So uh, I was thinking about which works I was going to perform in front of. Um, and then also, yeah, I made this very delicate papier-mâché figure which was um, jointed with ribbons and it you could take it apart so the performance was like 20 minutes long um, and it consisted of me speaking reading a script interacting with the props I'd made uh, and then there was also music that I had pre-recorded um, and it was almost just like a sort of shifting rhythmic story that that 
uh, I don't like the word rift, but it kind of rift around the, the the phrase the hold. So it could be that it was talking about being held by another person or not being held by another person, be, having uh, being suspended in water by a substance, um, the hold of a plane, travel, um, like... Yeah, the actual outfit itself was kind of like holding me in. Mm. Um, and yeah, so each section of the performance sort of responded loosely to that word. Um, and yeah, like like the exhibition in your flat that was these kind of fragmented body parts. Um, and yeah, like there was bits of it that were quite funny and... Um, yeah, I guess also same, some of it came from like a sadness yeah. or, um, you know, just all sorts of things all mixed together. But yeah, that that strong mouth in the background of that's a Fugette's painting. Um, around that time, I'd also been making other collages of, of big mouths. And initially for that performance, I'd thought about making something that was like almost uh, like two puppets of two sets of mouths that I was going to like hold next to each other and they were going to kind of talk but I didn't I didn't do that in the end uh, I think what's really interesting yeah. with these performance works and the paintings and the residency you're talking about is about this relationship or intimacy with bodies either physically or through reminiscence of that physical experience or that hold or that gesture of the intimacy whether that's positive or negative whether it's um a uh, emotion that is of lust or an emotion of sadness and that relationship to that space and i think maybe that has like a similarity in some of the collaborative works that you've been working on yeah. such as the ones with um uh with kim coleman um, yeah. if, if there be two, isn't it? Is it these ones here? Uh, yeah, if they be two. If they be two. Yeah. Um, so do you feel that sometimes with, with your work, because obviously it has this real intimate relationship to your experience with other people or your bodily mm -hmm. experience with bodies, um, how do you take that idea from your uh, own solo independent practice and apply it to like the collaborative works? Such as this one with Tim? Ooh. Well, I guess like organically the people who I uh, now collaborate with are um, well I have sort of two ongoing collaborations and then this work we're looking at here is a, is a more intermittent collaboration um, <clears throat> with uh, Kim Coleman and um, the other collaborations are uh, sort of distanced um, music collaborations really but this particular work, I guess, because Kim and I are really close friends mm. and we talk about the things that interest us or feel pertinent to us in our lives and what we want to talk about uh, in our work. And um, when I'm making work, if I'm unsure about it, um, I sometimes try and ask myself like the question oh well how how does this work like relate to the the world I'm living in now or uh how how is it a work of of this present moment in time or not you know like that helps me think around around it a bit so with this work with Kim both of us when we made it were uh looking for uh like relationships <laughs> so like long you know be that like a long-term relationship or just a sexual relationship short term and uh the the work features both of us so in this image here on the screen you can see there's like in the it's actually two projections mm -hmm. Uh, that cross over so this there's two projectors on the ceiling and then they they mix in the middle so there's like a chunk where you can see a crossover um so often it will be one of us filming the other one and we we filmed it all on our iPhones in Kim's home in her flat 
uh, and, and a lot of it under UV light that we'd hired. Um, and it was this sort of strange little, the, the, the film is like a bubble, really, I think, mm. like of in some ways it's like, like it's super intimate. Some of the footage, like we, we filmed each other naked <laughs> uh, and, you know, some of it features like, yeah, use of sex toys um, and yeah, there's a very strong soundtrack to it as well that we worked on in, uh, in collaboration with um, artist Simon Bayliss, who I also work with. So when you see the space, you're very much uh, pulled into the work. It's very, um, yeah, really atmospheric. The sound kind of grows from being quite fragmented snippets of conversation of us talking about... Um, like uh, just various aspects of the point we are in our uh, life in terms of relationships. So there's also a point where we, we mention like the word children and it mm. kind of echoes around the room and acknowledging that this is something that uh, some some women might be thinking about or not. Um, I think it's really and, apparent as well as yeah. that the... I think with all of your work is really highlighting the sexuality of it or the the draw on that body in a kind of really in that intimacy of bodies in some way isn't it yeah 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 it is and also I suppose I'm in I also like it when um so I suppose I quite often go for things that are like not very naturalistic either like I really like um uh, like I'm always very interested in pe how the body can also be decorated or um, sort of amplified or made more dramatic or um, theatrical, mm -hmm. I suppose. So, uh, yeah, that and, and through colour or quite bold silhouettes, um, I'm, I'm interested in that. Like I collect quite a lot of imagery of just you know interesting fetish wear that I think oh I'll draw that like that's interesting <laughs> you know like the way that people might choose to cover their body or present it or like it um yeah and how this crosses over between fashion and also like the psychology of of what goes on the body yes. and yeah. taking those ideas of, well, of color that's really apparent in your work as well <laughs> theatrical the kind of sensuality of being with people um whilst you kind of give a bit of an idea of maybe the, the title of the work which comes from a john don's poem doesn't it if you give a bit more context to that i'm going to slowly bring up some stuff that you've been doing with um with other collaborative partners kind of which yeah. also kind of look into that theatrical thing but if you could give us a bit more ideas about like where why why that poem for the title yeah, so the poem, I didn't know about it. Um, and it was through conversations with Kim um, that she knew the poem really well and had studied it um, when she was younger. And it's a really very beautiful romantic poem um, where, yeah, John Donne is kind of talking about like being, ab his partner being absent um but that almost uh, they become bigger in themselves through being distant from one another. I'm not describing it very well, but you can you can look it up if you look up if they be two. Uh, that's a line actually. Um, that's a line from the poem, and um, yeah, it's it's sort of a way they're talking about a way of surviving distanced. Uh, love, a valediction, forbidding morning. Yeah. So, yeah, forbidding morning. You're not yeah. being a way to not be sad or a way to not miss each other. Maybe it's relevant to to this point in time. There's a really nice part here where it says, uh, but we by a love so much refined that ourselves know not what it is. Interassured of the mind, careless eyes, lips and hands to miss. And I think that line there, in terms of all of the work that we've looked at through your practice, 
in terms of the ideas of eyes, lips and hands. That relationship with this poem has a lot more, when you look at it through reading of your work, it has like a really interesting relationship, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd not, I'd not thought that. Yeah, and it was definitely, I mean, I give, I mean, Kim, yeah, Kim introduced me to it and it's just, uh, it was actually really nice as well to take a, a line from a poem which um, was written, uh, I can't remember when it's written, 17th century maybe maybe let's go oh. With oh. yeah <laughs> it doesn't say on the website no i can remember weird facts about not very important things when it comes to remembering like <laughs> dates places i'm terrible at that and i have to admit it within we're, this interview yes we're talking about places maybe we should move into the small chapel at Durham Castle would be a really interesting yes. side segue into the work that you've been doing with Rory Pilgrim. Um, yes. Because I think that just talking about all this ideas of like uh, theatrical experience, really, I think this work maybe talks to that quite obviously in a way that <laughs> more so, more apparently maybe than the other works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you want me to talk about what this particular work was or shall I start by talking about my collaboration with Rory or what, yeah, what would you like? Let's start by talking about how you've started to work with Rory and then we'll move through that into the work. Okay, so uh, Rory Pilgrim is an artist who is based in the Netherlands, uh, also occasionally in the UK. And I met uh, Rory during uh, in, in, in 2015 while I was doing a programme it's uh, called The Syllabus, which is now in its sixth incarnation, I think. And it's led by Wai Sing Art Centre in Cambridge. Um, and alongside Wai Sing, there's six other organisations, mm -hmm. five maybe, <laughs> uh, who 10 artists get selected for the programme. Uh, there's an open call right now for it. And it's um now defined as um it's uh, like peer-led learning so when i did it it was almost like in uh, another way to maybe do a master's degree or it, it, it's quite broad really in the sense that it it's a really great thing that opens up ways of getting to know uh, other artists, other curators, uh, sharing knowledge. Um, yeah, you can look it up on this website that Paul has brought up. <laughs> and I, I applied for this um, and was selected and I met Rory there as lo alongside Brilliant. other great artists. Um, and uh, towards the end of the residency, uh, what did we do? Oh, we went to Guest Projects, which is a space uh, in London, and we spent a week there. Um, and we were kind of just uh, trying out making music, dancing, um, and we came up with a collaboration. Oh, that was it. Rory got asked to do a performance in Amsterdam at an incredible space called the Oudekerk. Um and uh, there's some images of it a bit further down. Um, and he invited me, yeah, it's here. So he invited me to, to do something with him. And the idea was we had that we were invited to respond to the space. It's in the very center of Amsterdam in the red light district. Uh, and so for this collaboration, we, we designed our own pop group called The Brilliant State and we sung and we performed songs that we've written in different parts of the church um and then later on in the evening there was karaoke within the church uh for people who'd come to the performance so that was a drawing that's a collaborative drawing that we did together um and also the collaboration is now just like i don't know it's a way to stay in touch with each other and uh, we have quite a lot of fun, like sending each other ideas for songs or even just names for like, I was eating some crumpets the other day that were part of a, 
a brand that's called Ancient Grains. And I said, I sent her a message saying, what do you think of that really good album title, Ancient Grain? And then we started sending each other silly photos of us uh, making folk music. <laughs> uh, but that's, that. that's... Anyway, this these images are manifestations of actual performances, um, often in religious spaces. Yes. Um, these images are from Grand Union, but these ones that we were talking about at the top, um, I was invited uh, by Hazel Donkin uh, in Durham University, uh, who you have also worked with recently, with Dawn Bothwell. Uh, um, and they run a really great residency program with the opportunity to to use spaces around Durham University in Castle, which is just it's bonkers, isn't it? Really amazing space. And this is a, a chapel, uh, Norman thirteenth century, maybe thirteenth century chapel, tiny space, um, and. I was just, yeah, I really wanted to to use this space. And and then in, in this instance, I invited Rory to do something with me. Um, and we, what the image shows is us being the brilliant state in this tiny chapel with a concert that we made. Mm -hmm. But it almost felt a bit like a school play. It was very... Uh, it was very nice to do it. We started off, so what we've got on our eyes is LED false eyelashes, which we kind of stuck underneath our eyes and we walked in and it was pitch black. I think you were there yes. in the audience. Um, there. And I couldn't actually see anything. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and you could just hear the sound of the kind of stone floor and we had also, it had recorded music and also live music. Mm -hmm. um, and we started off with a sound almost like lighthouses, uh, like a horn, fog horn, looking around in the, in the, in the dark. Mm. Um, and yeah, within the music we make also, we were talking about, again, like um, ways to be intimate or, and also we are physically quite intimate with each other. Mm in the performance um, and sort of like testing out different characters for ourselves. So sometimes we do things where we'll be quite strong with quite strong assertive body language, but then other times where we'll do things where we're looking quite uh, sort of passive or submissive and taking it in turns almost to be these different characters. Mm. Um, and Rory played the harp in this particular performance, which was beautiful. And he, he's an excellent harp player um, alongside many other talents. Yes. Yeah, it's been such a beautiful space. It, is, it was a stunning space. It was a really um, intense performance in terms of, I, you know, what you can't get across with the, the still images was the, the effect on the atmosphere of the lighting. Um, it was much darker in, in mm. the audience. Um, and that feeling of only really being able to see yours and Rory's eyes whilst the sounds were on created a completely different atmosphere and experience of the, the two performers. Um, mm. And I think, I think what's really important of what you've said as well with the work with Rory and, and with Kim is that collaboration is with friends. And in our mm -hmm. sector as, as artists, is we work with people mm. that we, we enjoy their company with. Mm -hmm. It's a friendship as much as it is a, a work relationship. Yeah, um, definitely. And taking that on, obviously, we're going to talk a bit about the work you've been doing with Simon Bayliss in terms of Splash Addict. But, yeah. how, you know, it's really good to hear that, you know, that these collaborations can still carry on in that relationship, even within these moments of physical quarantine to actually yeah. sustain those friendships right now are really important things. Definitely. To do. I really feel like they're like saviors. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. Moving on to Splash Addict with oh, another big mouth, <laughs> another giant mouth. There is a there is some motifs in your work that are consistent, <laughs> which I would say are orifices in general, uh, and specifically mouths, uh, and bodies, in some form, floating, yeah. whether that's paper or or, or, or with watercolor, 
very fluid mm. material. Um, you were just telling me before we started the recording that you'd recently been doing a new music video with Simon via yeah. the intricacies of Skype. How's that been going? It's going well. Um, yeah, it's sort of right in the middle of uh, yeah new music video being made. So the one on the screen, um, it was a commission that uh, we were commissioned by Tyneside Cinema in Newcastle upon time to uh, make a short video to be shown before films, mainstream films in the cinema. Um, and we used a lot of like green screen, which is a way very sort of like um, a basic way of doing special effects that was quite big in the, the 1980s uh, with music videos. Mm. Um, but what we're making now is uh, a song which we actually wrote like about a year, over a year ago. Um, but just because of various other commitments and lives we haven't released. Um, so the song's called Coming to Power. Um, and that title is taken from uh, the name of a, a book by Pat Khalifa. Um, and it's uh, an incredible uh, book and amazing title in itself and um yeah we we were like i think last week um we've actually been using it's quite an explicit book as well so uh but pat khalifa is a very interesting person um and um yeah it's uh, yeah, so we're making a music video for Coming to Power. But in its nature, it's actually going to be quite... Um, I don't want to say huge, but it's quite funny. It's going to be quite funny. I mean, maybe not funny. That's a really bad word. It's going like, to use humour in a way that exposes its meaning. Uh, kind of I mean, it. I'm using a filter on my face. Mm-hmm that turns me into a fruit <laughs> but I won't reveal what fruit it is and uh it's a red fruit strawberry. um it could be a strawberry could be a yes strawberry. <laughs> could be that my face is a strawberry through the entire video um which possibly like again it's this kind of contrast of the music which is we are being sincere like I, I, and I hate things that are ironic it's not ironic it's just i guess a contrast of the music is talking about um like taking ownership of your own capabilities as a person and um there's a line that says like coming face to face with your own power don't hold back come on strong mm. um uh but then i guess yeah we made this video whilst we're both unable to leave the house mm. in this time of uh, COVID-19 lockdown and uh, even though it's like a really it is a really serious time you know that it's uh, there's also to me it feels important to like everybody's finding their own survival tactics and even though I was worried it might be bad taste to do something that's uh, kind of light I was also thinking well in a way you've got to sometimes so the video will be coming out soon so uh yeah I, it will go up on we have a spotify can do some promotion we have spotify now and, and we work Ooh. together under the name splash addict so you can look up splash addict on spotify and also youtube and soundcloud uh, we have two songs on spotify now two songs Amazing. yeah coming to oh yeah and big talk. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i think that kind of segues into what i was going to ask you anyway was about how do you sustain <laughs> practice and making and you know not just in advice to those listening as to how to to motivate yourself or to keep ideas going but i think you've kind of already referenced it by just carrying on those collaborations regardless and in ways that you can is not yeah. Overwhelmed yeah. By the inability yeah. To physically exactly. Attack. The f the feeling of being overwhelmed is mm. quite easy. Um, and also, yeah, you know, alongside this, everybody's thinking about their 
income or lack of income and like how that's going to work and so there's lots of stress as well um so it's it's kind of managing those things uh and for me sometimes i feel like i go into a bit of a i have to force myself to go into a bit of a sort of shutdown when i'm trying to think about work like mentally i just think okay i've just got to focus on the the task in hand and try to not worry about other things just for a short period of time just to help make things but also you know it's uh, you just got to do little little and often little and often if possible Brilliant. i think i think that's for me. superb advice and probably a great place to wrap up so thank you for your time susie and keep safe and keep well you too paul nice to chat yes good to chat too thanks bye okay bye bye